All right, gents, this week on Tactical Rifleman, we are going to do a little bit of myth buster. Lots of everybody going back and forth on the internet, comments from everybody as far as which ammo is best for home defense, which type of ammo over penetrates more than others. Everybody has an opinion. So what I've done with some of the money from our patrons is I have built wall facades, everything from interior walls, two layers of drywall with two by four studs. This wall here is drywall, two by four studs, and then the exterior of a house like vinyl siding or wood siding. We've got uh, solid cinder blocks. We've got cinder blocks and red bricks. I even cut the wall out of the side of a trailer home, right? So I've got the walls, I've got all the different types of ammo, and I've brought in Jason, a Navy SEAL. He's a subject matter expert on this type of stuff, and uh, I'm gonna have him help guide us through this. Yeah, thanks, Carl. Uh, through training and operationally, I've, I've gotten to see a lot of different structures. Everything from the brick walls and cinder blocks to the drywall. Uh, in just short of building an actual Afghani mud hut, uh, I think we've got a good representation to put, uh, put our arsenal to the test. Do. I can't wait to see what happens. How do you test over penetration on the walls? What we're gonna do here is behind the walls when we shoot them, we've got ballistic gelatin. So I wanna give a shout out, big thanks to Clear Ballistics. Uh, they've got reusable ballistic gelatin. This shit is crystal clear, much better than the stuff we used to use. And the cool part is this stuff is reusable. So we're gonna be able to use this a lot more in the future, a lot of our future videos. So anyways, big shout out for that and on video, we're gonna to try to capture it, what these uh, rounds do, at the ones that do make it through the walls. So this is gonna be awesome, let's go do this. All right, Jen, so this wall right here is cinder block in the back with mortared red brick on the outside of it. So this would represent the outside of a, you know, a major, a major building, right, Jason? Yeah, no, I mean, not to speak the obvious, but this is a well-built wall. You've got the reinforced cinder block outside, ex external brick. Uh, we're looking at apartment complexes, maybe some schools, any kind of American urban environment. You're going to see this type of, of hardened structure. All right, let's shoot it. All right, boys, for this first shot, we're going to give it some bird shot uh, right to the wall face. Now, in, uh, in human terms, this really can do some damage to an actual person uh, close up. Uh, so let's see what it's going to do to this wall. All right, boys, uh, shot went good. Hit right up here in the wall. A little bit of dusting hitting the brick, but unless you're wanting to try to remove some graffiti off of it real quick, uh, it's, there's not much, not much damage to the wall. Definitely no over penetration uh, with, the buck, with, the, with the bird shot. All right, boys, next shot's gonna be some buck shot, 12 gauge uh, into the wall face. All right, boys, as you can see here, we've got some increased external structural damage, a little bit more than the bird shot. Uh, some of the brick came off the mortar. It's about as extensive as the damage goes. It hit a bit to the, to the top here because we got nothing pushing it down from the top. Uh, definitely no damage to the cinder block behind. All right, boys, uh, last round with a 12 gauge is gonna be our slug. All right, so the slug uh, going at 1,200 feet per second, it made it through this red brick, made a significantly bigger hole and more external damage than the rest of them. Went in through the red brick into the hollow space inside of the brick. So it did not penetrate the center block beneath, uh, but it did get through that first layer of red brick. All right, boys, the SIG MPX and uh, some military nine millimeter ball ammunition shooting the face of the red brick. All right, boys, uh, we shot that nine millimeter ball. It's a uh, military grade and super hot. Uh, we're even shooting it out of, out of a sub gun, which makes it even hotter. 
So any other caliber is gonna bring that down, that this, this penetration down even, even less than the damage it did here, which is very, very minimal. So as you can see here, if you can zoom in right here, very minimal damage, this red brick wall with that nine mil ball. That, uh, it's got a lot of punch to it. Five, five, six ball versus red brick wall. Now, if this is gonna be my guess, I bet you tickets to my Nickelback concert, it's gonna go through, but we'll see. All right, I guess one lucky viewer is going to a Nickelback concert. Uh, I lost the bet. I uh, kind of figured I would because when that 5.56 five, hit, hit that red brick, it actually rolled into that soft mortar, penetrated through. And like I said, it tumbled around a little bit. Didn't even have that power to penetrate that center block behind it. So uh, no over, over penetration behind and easy day. All right, Jason, what I built here, this wall is just eight inch cinder block. Now you can make cinder block walls tougher by filling them with sand or filling them with poured concrete, adding rebar. But I built this to just be a standard wall. Where would we see this wall? Uh, inside schools, inside apartment buildings here in the US. A lot of our walls between apartments, uh, between different uh, classrooms and stuff, they are nothing but hollow uh, eight inch cinder blocks. So anyways, that's why I built this wall, Jason. Yeah, it's good stuff. Uh, let's shoot it. You can see this stuff uh, in the United States. You can see it overseas. It's real common, and I can't wait for this test. Awesome. All right, boys, 12 gauge, gauge bird shot. Uh, gonna put it through eight inch cinder block. All right, boys, uh, structural damage with the bird shot. Uh, but that's about it. None of the pellets went through. The shotgun has a lot of push, but, but none of the pellets penetrated that eight inch cinder block. All right, shooting 12 gauge buck shot through the cinder block wall. Okay, boys, so we're really trying to stack the odds against this wall, putting that round where it's gonna matter the most. Now, the cinder block is not reinforced in the middle. So the point of impact went right through that that soft spot right here into that hollow space and did not penetrate out the back side of it. All right, of all these shotgun rounds, these 12 gauge shotgun rounds that are putting through the cinder block wall, I think this slug's gonna do the most damage. Uh, so let's see what it does. All right, boys, slug did a lot of damage. Now, structurally, uh, like I said, I'm trying to get the odds against this wall. So I've got a hollow spot, a hollow spot, and then right down the middle here, you got a nice piece of concrete supporting this block. Now, the slug went through, made a nice little mouse hole, hit the back end of it, and actually cracked the back end of the cinder black wall. It did not penetrate, but it did do some damage to the back wall. Uh, so that's what we got with this slug. All right, here we are with our SIG MPX and a stack of military nine millimeter ball ammunition. Uh, Shooting it through this eight inch cinder block. All right, boys, shot it with a nine mil, just basic military ball ammo. No hollow point, nothing like that, nothing crazy. Structurally the same as the shotgun. I got the hollow points on the side with that, that center mass structural area so odds were against this cinder block now nine millimeter went right through that cinder block hollow space and just tapped the back side but nothing big just pushed right through that front saw the back didn't do anything all right boys five five six through the cinder block wall now it's a real common building type with a real common weapon uh, that law enforcement guys are going to carry uh, if the shit goes down in the school or whatever so let's see what uh see what it does to this wall All right, with the five, five, six round, it's super fast. It went through this initial block, but it doesn't have a lot of weight to push through to the second block. As you, if, you, if you look through there, you can see a tiny little divot on the back end, but no penetration. Now, mind you, this is straight on. We shot this from a very short distance, the five, five, six round, perpendicular to the wall. 
Now, if we might have taken it at a 45 degree angle, it wouldn't have had to go through just two thin, thin layers of cinder block. You'd have went through the layer of cinder block, that supporting element, and then maybe two or three more to get into and through that cinder block wall. Uh, the damage done here is minimal. However, it did go through that hollow space. So uh, for any arguments out there, uh, you, you saw it here. Uh, the 5.56 round went through that cinder block, did not go through it, shooting perpendicular to the wall. All right, gents, I built this wall right here to be the exterior wall of my house, basically. What it has is sheetrock, two by four studs with the electrical and insulation in it. And then the outside of my house has uh, the particle board with uh, an insulating sheet for uh, waterproofing, and then it's red brick. So this is the exterior wall of my house. It's also very common for a lot of houses, brick house, brick wall houses here in the United States. So uh, what do you think, Jason? No, I'm excited. I think this is going to dispel a lot of myths, any ideas, any theories about what certain types of ammunition, rounds, and calibers are going to do to a real common structure, that brick, and the additional material that lies internal. So uh, let's shoot it. Now, we are going to shoot this from outside in because a lot of people think, well, if you miss, you're going to, you, chance of you hitting somebody outside, okay, fine. I'm not going to miss inside my house, but let's say I was aiming out the window and missed. This is hitting the side of someone else's house. We're actually shooting this from outside the structure in. All right, boys, we're going to shoot some 12-gauge bird shot through an exterior brick wall. All right, so we shot this exterior wall with uh, some 12 gauge bird shot. Very minimal damage to the exterior wall. It's, a, it's hard brick. I mean, although that 12 gauge is a very, it gives a powerful punch and that shot kind of spreads out. It got a few of these shot into the soft mortar, uh, but did not penetrate that hard red brick. Now, when you're talking about inside, yes, that's a different story, but externally the bird shot didn't do much damage. All right, fellas, next up is 12 gauge buckshot. That's eight pellets going into this exterior wall. So. Although it's, it's, it's a big pellet and the threat of missing is definitely increased now. So you want to keep those shots tight. Let's see what it does to this wall. All right, so that buckshot hit that exterior wall, minimal damage. Uh, all eight of those shots hit right in the vicinity of one another. A few of them went into this soft mortar, penetrated through there. None of it hit the particle poured behind it and the elements within into the interior. So everybody in the inside is pretty safe. Just a little bit of exterior damage. And that's about it. All right, gents, 12 gauge slug to an exterior brick wall. Now let's see what it does. All right, gents, 12 gauge shotgun slug into this exterior wall, hit that red brick, penetrated through, took a little bit of the mortar with it, and I even found the slug that I shot uh, right there within it. No damage to the particle board, the elements within. All right, gents, SIG MPX, nine millimeter military ball, basic ammunition uh, versus exterior red brick wall. All right, gents, nine millimeter ball to red brick wall. I didn't think it would do much, and uh, it, it didn't. Just a little bit of structural damage, uh, but nothing external, no zero, nothing, no penetration. All right, gentlemen, five, five, six ball uh, to exterior red brick wall. Uh, see if we can test this uh, penetration. All right, gents, the 5.56 did some damage to the exterior wall. So it went through a perpendicular hit. However, once it hit that solid red brick, it took a sharp left turn and tumbled into those hollow spaces within the mortar and into the, the, the brick spaces. Uh, however, there is no damage to the boards within, uh, only exterior, and stru exterior structural damage. All right, gents, what I've built here is this is an interior wall of my house, of your house, of pretty well everybody else's house. It's two layers of sheetrock 
with uh, two by four studs. Now, in the middle there, you might have uh, electrical wiring, uh, pictures hung on the wall, furniture in the way, but worst case scenario, perpendicular shot, you're looking at just two sheets of ply, uh, two sheets of drywall. That's not going to stop very much. So, anyways, uh, what do you think, Jason? This is a this is a typical interior wall. Yeah, real common. It's a uh, super super light. Nothing nothing hard about it. So. I'm kind of curious what all these different types of ammunition is going to do to it. Let's go shoot it. All right, so I'm pretty excited to do these, these videos, testing ballistics, testing the capability of the different weapon systems through the different uh, material in the walls, both internal and external. Now, I've never done any of these videos before. I've seen what ammunition can do to external and internal walls as far as breaching is concerned. You know, nine millimeter, which is a common weapon for home home defense, you know it's gonna it's gonna give a little bit of a punch. Now five five six when it hits something, it's gonna turn, it's gonna tumble all over the place. Uh, the slug and the different ammunition for the twelve gauge, it's got a lot of power and it's presumably pretty low risk when it comes to over penetrating these walls, which is what we're concerned with. Now one of the rules of firearm safety is always be aware of your target and what's behind it. Now why do we say that? Because if you haven't been trained, if you're a novice shooter and haven't been on the range too much. The most dangerous thing you could do is not hit your intended target, and that's what we're going to try to go over today. Now, over penetration is always going to be possible with whatever system you or whatever material you might be shooting, with whatever system you might be shooting. So, let's take a look at what this 12 gauge shotgun bird shot is going to do to this double drywall internal wall. Okay, gents, so what we're looking at is the back side of that shot. Now, the bird shot went through, hit our clear ballistics, ballistic gel, and did penetrate into it. However, the maximum lethality through one of these pieces of gel is usually to the 12 to 15 inch mark, the second half of this block, which the pellets did not penetrate. However, over penetration did go through that, that drywall, although the pattern did spread out in that bird shot and it lost a lot of power coming through that drywall, uh, you did get a little bit of overshoot in the back side. Now it's definitely something to consider when you're choosing ammunition for your shotgun if you're deciding to use it for home defense. All right, it's next up in the 12 gauge is nine pellets of buckshot. So we saw what the bird shot did to the two pieces of drywall. Uh, let's see what a shot of buck was gonna do. All right, gents, I uh, shot that buck shot from about 10 meters away, very, very 90 degrees to the two pieces of drywall. Now I'm standing on the back side of it once again to show you that it went through the first piece of drywall out the second and it didn't stop there. The energy from those pellets had enough to go through this clear ballistics gel and a few, and most of them escaped out the other side as well. So they are within that lethal range of this clear ballistics gel. Now, uh, now an argument for those Guys out there, and I'm telling you, I love comments. I love the argument. Let's keep them coming about the home defense and the best weapon for home defense, about the shotgun versus whatever being the best weapon for home defense. The over penetration risk uh, is still pretty high when you're shooting buckshot and you don't hit what you intend to hit when, you, when you're shooting it. Okay, just third up in the arsenal for our 12 gauge is our slug. Now, as we've seen, the bird shot with that spread pattern barely made it through the drywall, but it did. Uh, the nine pellets of buckshot Definitely sent some energy out the backside and into the gel. Now with the slug, you got one big fat slug, so accuracy is key. So if you have a complete miss, we're about to see what it's gonna do to this drywall.
Okay, so we shot that 12 gauge slug, uh, went right through the front, right through the back into our clear ballistics gel and did a number on it. It even exited out the backside with a lot of power. So it was a lethal dose of slug coming through that drywall. Uh, we even pushed the wadding through the drywall as well. It made it on the backside too. So having said that, if you're gonna shoot, accuracy is key with these slugs. Accuracy is key with this buckshot. So let's move on, get up in caliber a little bit. All right, gents, for this round, we're gonna use some nine millimeter ball ammunition through a Sig Sauer MPX submachine gun. Now, this ammunition is hot. It makes, it's real hot ammunition. This submachine gun's gonna make it even hotter. So I'm not a ballistic specialist, nor do I play one on TV. So this ammunition is not designed to dissipate or frange out in any, any way, shape, or form once it hits its target. Now, I'm not gonna get into a argument about ammunition or anything like that, but let's, I'm, I'm curious to start a discussion on what you guys think about uh, the different ammunition that's out there. So I'm gonna shoot this nine millimeter through this half inch drywall and check the over penetration that happens. All right, gents, so we just shot this nine mil ball round through two layers of half inch drywall. Now, it hit this clear ballistics gel pretty decently. And as, as you can see within, you've got that secondary cavitation and it exited out the back. Man, it's beautiful. It did a lot of damage on the back side. Now let's talk about this secondary cavitation on somebody standing on this side of the wall. Now what this is gonna do to your internal organs, all your hollow method and all your hollow spaces in here, it's gonna tear it apart. It's really gonna, man, these, these rounds really tear you up. Uh, once it gets in there and tumbles around a little bit. So uh, this is a great example of nine millimeter going through and seeing what it's gonna do on the back side if you end up missing your intended target. Okay, boys, so we just shot that drywall, half, inches, half inch of drywall with nine millimeter. Hot round and a hot gun. We are not doing this wall any favors. We're not giving any, any, any odds to the wall resisting the penetrating power of these, these rounds. Now we're gonna shoot it with a 5.56. Now, as we all know, nine millimeters is designed to punch through that wall and just keep on going. It's a big, fat round. Now, with a 5.56, five, it's moving a lot faster, but you've got a, not a lot of mass behind this 5.56, five, so we're gonna see. Essentially, I think it's gonna twid, do a little turn, a little tumble. It may not penetrate to this drywall, but let's see what it does. All right, gents, so we just shot this half inch drywall with 5.56 into our clear ballistics gel. We got over penetration through the first layer into the second layer into our gel. Secondary cavitation where the, the round tumbled through, ended up in the back two thirds, that lethal end of the gel turned around. So the, the round is actually facing the other way. Now, personally, in my humble opinion, I can't wait to talk to you guys about this. This is my gun for home defense, the 556. I like the rifle. Just like, excuse me, just like that shotgun went through the gel, that 556 five, rounds is still staying in what you just hit. The buckshot went through, the bird shot went through, and the slug definitely went through uh, with that 12 gauge shotgun, but the rifle round stayed within the, the target when I hit it. All right, gents, this next wall is an exterior wall of a lot of houses. Uh, it's drywall on the inside, all right, still two by four studs, but you notice there's insulation, and then the exterior is uh, particle board and some sort of out, uh, outside siding. Might be vinyl siding. In this case, we have a, uh, an exterior wood paneling 
It's a common on a lot of houses here in America. So anyways, that's what we're gonna be shooting here. Now, because this video is gonna be long, we're only gonna shoot this with two. Obviously, the, the 5.56 is gonna burn through it. Obviously, the slug's gonna burn through it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna shoot this with the two most common ones. We're gonna shoot it with the nine miller. We're gonna shoot it with buckshot. Anything to add, Jason? No, this is good. We're gonna see what happens in the internal. Now we're gonna see what happens on the outside walls, going from inside, going out. Outstanding. Let's shoot this. All right, guys. As, let, as much as I like shooting up Carl's wall, walls with all kinds of ammunition, 12 gauge, 9 mil, and 5.56, my intent is to start the discussion about home defense, what you can do for your family to help make your home the most optimally defensible. Now, you can put your family through some training. You can train yourself, get some firearms training to get that accuracy down so you don't have to worry about overpenetration with the rounds that you're selecting. Now, you're obviously going to want to manage that risk by selecting the appropriate ammunition. So I can't wait to get the discussion going about what you guys think about these experiments, what you've seen in the past. Now, I'm no ballistic scientist by any means. Uh, I'd love to hear what some of you firefighters think. I've seen that firefighters are real experts in the structural integrity of a lot of these different walls we're going to be shooting today. So right now we're going to shoot some 12 gauge through drywall and vinyl siding. All right, gents, so 12 gauge buckshot through drywall and exterior vinyl siding, pretty common on most homes. Hit that clear ballistics gel, cavitated through it, even blew some of the material from the house into the gel itself. It made it into the gel, into that lethal area, but it didn't make it through. So that added resistance with that internal components of the wall and that vinyl siding did help slow those bullets down. Now, Take a note, this is the same piece of clear ballistic gel that we used, so the pellets within are the, the bird shot that we used before. But none of the, the, the 38 caliber balls went through, they all stayed within the, the gel. Okay boys, shooting nine mil through that drywall with the vinyl exterior siding with the SIG MPX and nine millimeter ball, see what happens. All right, so this is super exciting actually. Went through the drywall through that vinyl siding and that nine mil round almost took the exact same path as our last nine mil round. So full disclosure, this is the same block that we used for the last nine mil through the drywall. Man, it went clean in, clean out, very similar cavitation patterns. Unlike the buckshot that went in and had a significantly different cavitation as it did with the, the just the two pieces of half inch drywall. So that was a pretty cool experiment. I like, see, I like seeing that. All right, gents, for those of you that have seen trailer homes rolling around on the Weather Channel, this, uh, but haven't seen one up close, I actually cut this section out of a trailer home. Uh, it's never seen, it's thin aluminum sheeting on the outside. Uh, it's a one by three, all right, stud with a little bit of insulation in the middle, and then, uh, paneling on the inside of the wall. Some trailer homes are a one by two for insulation. Very, very thin walls. Gents, these things don't stop anything. All right, and on that note, when you find yourself in a home defense uh, scenario, if you're worried about over penetration in your own house, remember, you know the footprint of your house. Somebody penetrates your, your threshold, comes into your house, you know where your family members are. If they, those family members aren't in your safe room or haven't made it behind you, if you know they're to your front, you still know where those family members are. Right? You know where they are. I'm looking down the hallway. I know the bedrooms over here. I know the bedrooms downstairs. Don't worry about the overpenetration. Wor worry about the bad guy. If there's a chance that they may be, your family members may be on the same plane, 
yell to them, talk to them, verbally engage the friendlies in the house and tell them to lay down on the ground. If they drop down in the ground, you take a knee, now you're shooting up at an angle. You're, what you're doing is you're using angles to your advantage. So you can protect your loved ones even when you're in an area that has the potential for over penetration such as a trailer or the inside of your house that's just two thin walls. Well, hey, Jason, I want to thank you for coming out, delivering that wealth of knowledge for us here. Uh, it's been awesome. I personally have learned a lot about over penetration. At the end of the day, I'm still going to use a rifle for home defense. Tactical rifleman, duh, who saw that coming? All right, thanks, Jason. Yeah, my pleasure, Carl. Y'all take care. Shoot straight. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter so you don't miss out on anything.